Hey guys, it's Katie. I'm going to do another quick pantry meal. I've already done one for macaroni and egg soup. I wish I would have done one when I did the fried rice because that came together really quickly with just like stuff that you can have stored in your pantry and fridge or uh, pantry and freezer. But anyway, I'm going to do tonight, we're going to do salmon cakes. And so I'm using canned salmon. I have a little celery and onion. If you don't have these, they're not essential. But you want some kind of onion. So if you have onion powder or like dehydrated onion flakes, or um, I also have chives. You want something to add some flavor. And then I have an egg and some saltine crackers. I'm going to crush these up into crumbs. If you don't have saltine crackers, you can use breadcrumbs. Um, and then I'm going to chop up the herb. So. Alright, so you just want to chop it up pretty fine. If the vegetables are too big, they'll your like salmon cakes will fall apart or they'll be more likely to fall apart. So if you have like a little a mini food processor, that would be a good thing. And I just put it all in here together. You want everything pretty minced up. And I just used a, like a little portion of that onion. Not too much. Alright, so next you wanna crack your egg in a bowl. I can do it one-handed. Oh, look at that skill. And I think it's easier to I'll just rinse off my hand. I think it's easier to beat up the egg before you add the other ingredients in. Just get that mixed up. I gotta figure out how to open up this mangled can. I guess I'll go from the other side. Alright, so I got the can open. I'm gonna put it in. And they usually, I guess depending on the brand, they usually will be pretty big chunks. And a lot of times there'll be like skin and bones in there. I just crush them up because they're like cooked in the canning process. The bones are soft. They're not like you're going to choke on them or anything. And they're a good source of calcium, especially if you're dairy free like me. I just mash them up, mix, mix them up, flake them up. And break it up really as much as you want but the more finely it's broken up the the more likely your little patties will stay together i'll go ahead and put my veggies in as well scrape that out once i have my other hand back and then i'm going to um, crush my crackers crush them up right in the sleeve if you already have your food processor out from uh, doing that, you could do, do them in the food processor. Once they hit the liquid, they kind of crush up more, so it doesn't. You don't need to have them super fine. Just keep mixing them. Put the crackers in. I guess I'll put the whole sleeve in. Kind of eyeballing this recipe, so hopefully that's not a mistake. And you just want to mix it. You can even just like with your hands, you know. And the salmon, canned, canned salmon has salt. If you're using fresh or frozen salmon fillets, uh, they're most likely will not be salt. But the canned salmon has salt, and the saltines, unless you get unsalted ones, have a good deal of, amount of salt. So you shouldn't have to add any salt. But you can add garlic powder and black pepper would be a good addition. You can add whatever kind of seasonings you want. The uh, onions and the parsley will give some good flavor too. I'm actually going to do it like this. If it's super dry, you can add another egg doesn't want to hold together, you can add more crackers. I think this is a good a good balance. You can see it's kind of already holding together. We're going to make little patties, and then I can also go through and kind of crush these larger pieces of cracker as I mix it up. Yeah. 
And if you let it sit a little while, the moisture will go into those crackers and the form patties a little better. I'm going to just go ahead and start cooking right away so we can have dinner. But if you have the time to do it ahead, you can. Alright, so um, I got my oil is heating up here. And you want to have like a puddle of oil. This is not just like a saute sort of thing. We're going to shallow fry these. Um, you could also like make them in patties and bake them. Everything except for the egg is cooked through, so um, I don't know. They're just better and browner and crispier and better, in my opinion, if you fry them. So that's what I'm going to do. I also went ahead and just chopped up uh, cabbage. I'm going to steam this, and then that will be like our veggie side dish. If you are going to the store infrequently for produce, but you still want like fresh produce as much as possible, get cabbages. They can stand in your refrigerator for a long time, and you can do a lot of things with them. So. Um, we actually just went today. Well, I didn't go. My husband went for us and got us some fresh produce. I'm so happy. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to have. And then I'll probably serve like buttered bread or something to go with it. It's Friday and it's Lent for us, so more of a sacrificial meal anyway. Um, but yeah, let me get these pattied up. I'm going to go ahead and put them on this cutting board that I used to cut up the cabbage on. That way I'm not dirtying any more dishes than necessary. And then once they're all pattied out, then I'll start frying them and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, and I'm using this larger, this is what I use to dish out like cupcakes or muffins, like a larger scooper, and I'm just going to scoop them out, and then I will shape them up. I don't know why I didn't get my tripod out for this video, but here we are. Okay, it's holding together pretty well, so I think I got my moisture ratio just right. All right, so I got... 10 patties all lined up here and they're I guess moderately sized. You can make them whatever size you want. I would just make them a uniform thickness and size so that they cook evenly. Um, and if they're smaller they're just easier to flip. But you know, do whatever you want. See how they turn out. And I have my oil heated up. Put them in here. Goo -goo -gaga. Goo -goo -gaga. Since I have 10, I'll do two batches of five. That way they don't get too crowded. Just let them cook uh, until they're golden brown. And then we'll flip them and cook them again. Let's we'll see how long it takes. All right, so they're frying. It's kind of at a medium. You don't want to fry them too aggressively or they'll fall apart. Once they start to brown on the underside, they will hold together a little bit better. Let's just give a little peeky poo. Oh, I don't know if you can see. It's like a yellowy golden brown. I want to a brownie, golden brown, so we'll go a few more minutes. I'm also going to put a lid on the cabbage and turn the heat on so it comes up. I just let it steam till it's as tender as I like, and then I just season with salt and pepper. Like I said, simple meal, um, but should be delicious. Focus. We're at seven minutes. They're looking nice and brown. You might want to move them around in your pan if uh, they seem to be getting brown on one side versus the other. That does look good. I'm going to cook again on the other side. And you can serve these with tartar sauce. I don't have any relish. You don't know how to make tartar sauce. I mean, you can find a recipe, but it's really just mayonnaise and sweet relish. Sometimes you can put like lemon pepper or lemon juice or whatever. I don't know. Growing up, we just mix mayonnaise and re uh, relish. I don't have relish stuff, so I don't know. Knowing my husband, he'll just put sriracha on it anyway. Alright, looking good. Alright, I think uh, I'll get these out. I'll cook those ones up. Um, yep, yeah, and then serve up. I'll show you the plate when it's ready to serve. Alright guys, that'll do it for this video. If you make this recipe, let me know how you like it. If you make any adjustments, leave some comments down below. If there's anything else you'd like to see from me, be sure to leave comments down below as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!